everybody. It's episode 50 on EdTech Chat and Chew. We are super excited, are we not, friends? The big five. Oh. <laughs> Three years. I'm more excited than I'm going to be when I actually turn 50. <laughs> I am going to agree with that statement. <laughs> But 50 episodes, we've, we've done a lot of projects in the last three years, we've created a lot of um, new opportunities for other teachers, we connected with the world. I, I think we've had a pretty good run, friends, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely. And it was just some crazy idea that the three or four of us got in there and said, what if we did this? I don't know, let's give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and I mean, you just think about the number of uh, countries and classrooms and continents that, that we've connected to the projects we've done. And the number of things we've talked about, it has been um, absolutely an amazing, you know, year and a half so far. I just, you know, I've learned so much myself, and it's just been such a blessing to be able to talk to you guys every Monday, and yeah, it's just been awesome. Well, and it, what I think is really awesome is that we all share kind of the same philosophy about getting kids and teachers on board in global learning, and you know, we just have fun. And speaking of fun, I'm going to have a new project to share with us today, so that's that's going to be great. But Mike, I'm going to hand it over to you. And uh, you know, let's think about these last three years of doing the podcast. What's one of your big highlights? Well, uh, you know, there's so many, so many incredible things that have happened. Uh, but you know, I I think back to when we first started, um, and I think just as important as any episode that we've done was the the two weeks beforehand, the conversations that we had just getting this started of what what we envisioned and why we wanted to start this. I mean, there's so many different podcasts out there and so many different groups of people who are sharing amazing things. Um, but really, it was just the four of us at the time, um, you know, along with Andrew, who can't be with us today. And, and um, we just said, you know what? Like, there's, there's too much incredible in this group of four. Um, we're having such amazing conversations that we need to share this with other people. Like, why don't we just record this and, and share it so that other people can have access to these conversations that we're having? And, um, you know, that's, that's how everything got started. And, and really, those those beginning conversations were as powerful to me as anything that we've done uh, since then. Um, but I also think about some of the projects that we've done. Um, the Virtual Valentine's Project, the, the Kid Wish Project where, you know, kids were not only, um, you know, connecting with each other, which we're so passionate about, but we're also really thinking about what it was that mattered to them and how they wanted to change the world. And for us to be able to allow kids from all different locations to share with each other through those, those different projects has been something that's uh, that's really made me an optimist about what's possible in, in classrooms. And it's made me dream about bigger things and other ways to do that with my kids. So, um, yeah, all of that, all of it's been amazing. Totally agree. Totally agree. All right, Karen, what's been one of the big highlights for you? Okay, so one of the, and I'm going to share two things. One is just being able to learn with the, the three, four of us, five of us, <laughs> depending on who we're chatting with, because you guys inspire me so much. Um, and I just, feel like you guys are changing the world and I get to be a part of it so <laughs> yay um, but I have to say that you know um, last school year at the at the end of the school year um, you guys were talking about the project you had going on with um, the cheery school um, and and I remember just just thinking it was amazing and wishing I could be a part of it and um, just that global connection where the kids were helping other kids and it was like a passion, I felt like it was this passion project, it was something they were so invested in and listening to how they were teaching other children you know across the globe math and and um, I was just so inspired and the whole time that you were away Mike I'm, I'm reading your blog posts and and I'm just like smiling like this is just amazing and I know him <laughs> I know you guys I know all of you guys you're so amazing um, and then then the fact that you took the time to share your journey with us um, and share that I just think that you know the projects that that we're doing as a team um, just really touch my heart and it makes me feel like you know, we're making a difference, and I, I know we are, but but I mean, I get to see it. <laughs> I get to see it, and it's it's amazing. I, I love being a part of this group and learning with you guys, and and making the connections with uh with the viewers as well. Oh, that's that's awesome. Okay, Micah, what's your highlight? Well, there's there's so many. I'm I'm new to the group within the last year, and I was hooked when uh Diane asked me to be a part of the match game. As in our viewers, if you remember, we. Mike gets into his game show voice host. <laughs> yeah, 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 our little theme music, and um, I was I was hooked. Um, I'm a lifelong learner, and just to be around such passionate people, it just gives me that little go get 'em every every uh, at the beginning of every week. Um, so I was hooked on that, and then I actually joined one of the first projects as a virtual Valentine's, and I think it was with um, 
one of Karen's teacher friends, and so we connected with our friends down in El Paso, and just to see my kids light up at the possibility of communicating with peers outside of our community was, it was magical. And so I was hooked, and I just love learning from, from y'all. Oh, that makes me happy. <laughs> How about you, Diane? What was, what was some of your favorite moments from the past year and a half? Well, I always love it when Bucky the Elf shows up. That's always what it is. <laughs> and the match game is, is always a highlight because we just giggle. And I love the fact that Karen always is drawing on her iPad and then shares it up on the screen. <laughs> That's my favorite part. It's, and, you know, it's something I'd never thought of. It's just, well, hey, you know, it just works. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah. But probably for me is just uh, the shared passion is a big highlight for me that we can all share in the idea of what's possible. And I'm sorry, the copier is running. <laughs> and, um, that and we have, we work really well together. So we have a good project idea. We're pretty good about breaking away and, and someone says, well, I'll take on this piece and I'll take on another one. Or we work together to link up classes for Squiggle of Awesome. Or we link together for uh, Kid Wish or Va Valentine's. We've pretty much, if you think about it, since the beginning, we've really almost got down to one project a month. We're getting really close to those numbers. And the only other person I've seen do that is projects by Jen, which is very good um, experiences where kids can do a little quick data exchange, but I like that our piece is teaching teachers how to use new technologies through the process. Um, not just a quick Skype call, but they're learning creativity tools with the, with the whole experience. It's awesome. So those are my big things. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely a great point um, because I can't tell you how many teachers in my building have started with, like, let's say, the virtual Valentine's project, and they said, I, I need a tool to use this. And so I went in and worked with them on how to use Animoto the first year. And now they're, you know, creating Animotos for the, the garden project that they have or, for, you know, for something else. Um, it's just it's added tools to their toolbox that have allowed their students to start creating other things, um, even after our projects end. And I, I agree with you. I think that's been a huge, huge piece to, to everything that we've done. Definitely. And we've become pretty good friends as well. There's even a little rivalry going on right now. Do you want to share the wager? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Well, um, yeah, so those of you that know Mrs. Smoke in real life know that she is an amazing cook, um, and she makes some great chocolate chip cookies. And um, so I, I definitely wanted to make sure that I got some of those chocolate chip cookies. And so knowing that the Mets are going to win the World Series and that she's a Royals fan, uh, we made a wager that uh, the loser would have to bake and ship chocolate chip cookies uh, to, to the winner. Um, and now my wife is a little bit nervous. Um, she doesn't have as much faith in the Mets as I do. Um, she knows that I'm an excellent baker, but she also knows that uh, the kitchen will look like a bomb went off after I'm finished. So um, she is she is a little bit nervous about that, but I'm, I'm confident in my Metsies that they'll pull it off. So Just having the conversation on Facebook, and his wife pops in, and she says, well, am I making these cookies? <laughs> my husband knows, doesn't know how to make the cookies. <laughs> And so there's been a little bit of fun going back and forth, and uh, we've decided here that when your cookies come to Kansas, we're going to have a group party to eat them. Right, Micah? <laughs> she'll, she'll be there, I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. We'll be down. So, um, Karen, it really comes down to you. Are you going the Mets or the Royals? Mm, I don't know. Because, mm, you know, I'm a Texas fan, and my teams are out. So I, I think... Um, all right, I'll root for Mike's team. How's that? We'll go for the Mets. Woo, let's go Mets. Yes, right, because so because Diane, I guess you've got a Royals fan next to you, so yeah, I have I have got team, so that works <laughs> out really well. We'll have to keep it, you know, see what happens down the road. Maybe we'll share the cookies via the podcast, which would be more exciting. Mm. There you go. <laughs> I love it. And I'll I'll be at I'll be at Game Three of the World Series on Friday. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's awesome. Very You're coming to Kansas. You you don't want to have the you don't want to go there. You want to come here and watch. <laughs> Actually, I would I do collect. You know, like I, I've been to a lot of different ballparks, and Kansas City is one I haven't been to. So we'll have uh, when, and when I finally make it out there and come visit, we'll have to go to Royals game. Done. It is a deal for sure. Okay, so um, Mike, do you want to start with anything you've got going on on your end? Yeah. So actually, uh, right before we started this call, I was out lugging lumber in uh, from the parking lot um, because. <laughs> Um, my, my students, I, I mentioned it last week, are designing their own organelles for a cell project where they're going to build walk-in cells. Um, each organelle is going to have a QR card with QR code where they, uh, parents can come during parent-teacher conferences and scan about the organelle to get more information. 
Um, but for the cell wall, for the animal cell that we're building, um, you know, the students actually designed that they wanted to build a frame out of lumber. Um, and so, of course, I had to go get them some lumber. So um, I just looked at him. Um, so we're working on that. Um, my third graders are studying world biomes. And so they've been using Haiku Deck to create presentations. Uh, we just finished with our last class there. And our fourth graders, um, if, are any of you familiar with the SCOBY? Mm -mm. So it's a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. Um, mm -hmm. The bacteria and yeast live together, and they get fed with tea and sugar. Um, and actually, uh, I think it's kombucha tea that's, that's created from it. But um, you know, you, you brew the tea, you give it the, the colony feeds off of this, and it makes kind of like a rubbery, um, thick, living um, symbiotic colony that floats on the top of the liquid that's in there. So anyway, I was given a giant jar of, um, with a scoby in it um, by one of our kindergarten teachers. And what our fourth graders are going to be doing next week is they're going to, I'm going to tell them what it is that it's a SCOBY and what SCOBY stands for, but I'm not going to give them any more information. Uh, and then I'm going to give them a piece of it and a mason jar, and we're going to have a little competition between fourth grade classes to see who can research and figure out how to grow it the largest in you know a month or two months or whatever period of time it is. So they're going to have to figure out what it eats and how to feed it and you know all those kinds of things. So um, those are the, the kind of local projects um, that I have going on. Uh, but we're still looking to make, you know, make our connections. Uh, we've still been playing um, Mystery Animal Skype with our third and fourth graders. They're connecting with other classes. Uh, we just, one of our Skype master teacher friends, uh, Kyle Calderwood, set up a call for us in New Jersey last week where we played against one of a uh, teacher that I went to college with. We played against each other. And uh, we, we had kind of a rivalry going on there to see which one students <laughs> would win. Um, and actually, neither one could figure out the other one's animal, so that, <laughs> you know, we, we both lost, I guess. Um, and we've been doing plenty of virtual field trips. We had, um, you know, the chief scientist from NASA last week, and um, we've got a couple other uh, virtual field trips coming up in the next couple weeks. So, you know, it's been busy. Well, and you know, I'm already thinking for your your science project. It'd be interesting if there were another class somewhere else who was also doing it. You could do a little comparison via Skype. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be awesome. And I'm and I'm sure um, from what I've done research on a lot of a lot of um, science classes are doing these kind of SCOBY things. So, um, yeah, that would be a really interesting uh, connection to make. And maybe that would be, you know, we talked about putting lessons up on Skype in the classroom. That might be a great lesson for me to develop and put up on the website. Definitely, definitely. Okay, Karen, what are you working on these days? Well, uh, there's a lot of things. Um, in fact, uh, last Friday we had a little staff meeting with our ITS in our district, and we were talking about Hour of Code. Um, and we talked about, you know, do we want to launch this district-wide and have, you know, all of our campuses coding? And we thought we're going to start with our most excited teachers, and we're going to create an event, an Hour of a Code event for our teachers in December, the week before the Hour of Code, because we're thinking if they all come and they get really excited about it, uh, maybe they'll go back and code with their kids the next week. <laughs> So, um, so we're we're uh, we're booking our our professional development center, and we're gonna have a big code event, and we're gonna invite them all. You know, bring your laptop. If you don't want to bring your laptop, there's a computer lab, and then uh, two of us will do a bunch of unplugged lessons. And so we're just hoping that the teachers think it sounds exciting, and might want to come and learn about it, and maybe they'll write their first line of code with us. Um, and so we're just we're working on trying to get our teachers really excited about Hour of Code. And um, let me see, there was something else that was really cool going on. I lost my mind here. Here, hold on. Uh, or the thought, I guess. <laughs> um, oh, and, and I had a, a teacher. I was just visiting one of our active learning leaders at one of my campuses. And uh, she had created an analog, I've got to show you, an analog Bebot game. Ah! I was so excited. I'm going to go create my own now. But she was just trying to get her teachers excited about Bebot um, because we don't actually have the real Bebots. And so her approach was we're going to try analog and then we're going to have them use it on the iPad and then maybe, just maybe, we'll get some uh, some Bebots. I don't know. So, so Karen, tell me more about this Bebot. I'm not familiar with that. Well, Bebot is a, a little robot. It's um, I, I've I've seen it introduced to be used in early childhood, but basically it's a little robot that you can program, and you can program it with an iPad. I don't know if there's any other tools that you can use it with. I know Diana and Micah, you guys have. Do you guys have a Bebot? We do not. No. <laughs> okay. I've seen them, but we just don't have it in this district. So, so I really want one, but um, I've been looking at you know more information about them online. But they, you know, you can buy the Bebot kit, but they also have these mats. And so, in my brain right now, I'm kind of brainstorming um, ideas for maybe a digital media center for early childhood, and thinking it would be great to have some of these Bebots and introduce challenges um, either weekly or monthly. I'm thinking more monthly because I'm thinking we want lots of different things for our kids to do. Um, but in there, they could code things that they're learning about. So it could be shapes that they could code a square or a circle. Um, 
they have these mats with alphabet letters and they have I mean basically lots of different mats where you can create your own little challenges where they could spell their name or I don't know I'm just in a brainstorm phase right now but um but of course they can do more so if you're wanting to use bbots with third fourth or fifth grade you could increase the challenge and make it a little little more difficult but um but it's just it's just a fun way to start off coding all right, introduce coding anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> and I've seen it with kindergarten. They love it. Absolutely love it. So you're going to have a blast. Well, and I'm, I'm, I'm in the beginning stages of looking into Minecraft EDU because in our early childhood center, it's a, just a pre-K through first grade school, I'm thinking we really need to do some more things in that computer lab that would make it a, a creative space rather than where they just go in and play a game or take a... Um, a test, you know, um, and I've been watching my own five-year-old and my own eight-year-old in Minecraft, and I'm thinking, could you imagine what it would be like if we had we had Minecraft EDU in that lab, and their challenge was to build a community, build your own, build, you know, we're going to build our 1A community um, because they were learning about communities, or we're going to build, I mean, whatever they happen to be learning about, they could build it in there and I'll bet they would have so much fun because I tell you I don't have to tell my child to go in and build something in Minecraft he's just so excited about doing it you know it's genius absolutely genius you have to keep us posted on that one promise I will I will I'm again just brainstorming and trying to get a couple people to buy into my thoughts so well, when you get the B -bot, that's all you need you can get the B -bot, let them play with it they'll be in they'll be yeah. in okay Micah what you working on yeah well, it's Monday, and last week, um, Diane and I, we worked with our cadre of teachers who have the Chromebooks in their classrooms, and we worked uh, specifically on Genius Hour with them. That's been kind of the hot topic here in our district. I know it's going on in other districts as well, um, having kids do Genius Hour. And so we turned it around on them. We talked about Genius Hour, gave them some resources, and their homework for us for the next three weeks is to run their own professional development Genius Hour. We pulled out some of the ed tech trends and, and such for this school year and they're going to choose their topic and they're going to run with it. So I'm really excited to see what they come up with. I, I'm really excited about this one, especially when we have teachers who are all kind of varied in their ability levels and just what they're aware of what's out there. So Micah put together the most beautiful thing link that you've ever seen and it has 12, are we 12 or is it is that right? Well, different concepts of things that are happening currently in ed tech, and coding is one of them, and we have just how to be a connected educator to what is Genius Hour, to open education resources, or just a little bit of everything. And this amazing lady went and did all this research to put it all together, so cyber high five to you, Micah. But um, I'm very excited to see where they come from this and see what, what comes into that. As trends come and go, I think these are the ones that are going to stick around a little bit longer. And for myself, today we have a high school geography class that is doing Skype around Latin America. Every hour is doing a different country and uh, it's been very exciting to see what we've discovered. One of the gals that we spoke with earlier today from Puerto Rico, she's actually doing a, an internship at a restaurant in Boston. and I met her this weekend <laughs> and she was she's amazing, truly amazing. But she has a degree in sports management, and her family runs restaurants, and so she's up here in the state side of mainland area doing things. But she spent a lot of time explaining what the difference is between a territory and a state. And what was very interesting, I thought, was in the last election for the president here in the U.S., of course, they cannot vote, but their community has voted. They really like to become a state. So, no, Congress hasn't acted on that, but maybe at some point we'll have 51 states, which could be very cool, very, very cool. Yeah. And actually, I mean, you know, that's, that's interesting because um, a couple of years ago when I was teaching fifth grade, um, we looked at this also when we had, um, we had Skype with a meteorologist that was from Puerto Rico, and that led to a discussion on, on exactly that topic, uh, whether or not Puerto Rico would become the 51st state. And it was really interesting to have kids do research on the reasons why it might happen and the reasons that's holding it back. Um, and to have them go into detail on that. That was that was a really eye-opening experience for them. The kids were riveted with, like, <laughs> they were just really fascinated. You know, high school people don't get really excited about things, but you could see that their wheels were turning, and it was it was an awesome discussion. Um, aside from that, we do have a new project that I will share with us today, and it's one that's being put together with Kimberly, Karen's sister. 
I'm Pete Delgado, so let me do a quick screen share and I'll show you what it is we've got going on here. And this is it. The Master Gobbler of Disguise uh, Practice. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> so just like who you have seen in the past with um, turkeys or Oh, let's take it a little something more familiar. For those of you who do Chick Fil A, they do have a dress like a chicken, a dress like a like a cow, so you can save all the chicken to get free Chick Fil A food. Similar idea, and this has been around for a while. The idea of uh, having turkeys dress up as something else. But what we're going to do for this one is it's all about using puns in the writing. Uh, they're going to look at a historical American figure or folklore character and uh, research his story, figure out to what is this person famous for. Then they're going to make the disguise for the costume to be matching that historical figure. And then they're going to come up with some fun names. So like instead of George Washington Carver, it could be George Dressington Carver. You get the <laughs> idea. Yeah. A little bit more on the Thanksgiving sort of thing. Abercran Lincoln, which I thought was kind of cute. That was Pete's. That was good. Um, <laughs> And then we've also given some digital extensions for that. So classes will create their, their turkeys and write their quick bio, but we want to see as many puns in the writing as possible. So with that, I found this pretty amazing website called Words to Use. And you can type in a theme or a topic, and it will give you nouns, adjectives, verbs that go along with that particular topic. Isn't that kind of genius? Yeah, that's great even similes and metaphors, and even some quotes. So uh, it's a great way to go back and just get people to stop um, using the same old, same old. They can start putting in some new pieces in there. So uh, that one we're hopefully going to publish today. I need, I need uh, Kimberly to take the last look at it to see if it's ready to go, and then we can have classrooms join in. But classes will each create their own. We'll link them up, and then they can Skype and share what they have created. So we're looking at four. Fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh grade. Are you posting it in Skype in the classroom, or is it just yes. word of mouth? Yes, okay. I'll put it up there, and then I'll put it on our our uh, chat and chew page on Facebook yeah. as well, so you can get in and start joining in. That's great. And I, I love it. I love it. I think I think it's genius on so many different levels. I love the writing component to it. I just think it's going to be so much fun. I hope I hope that our fifth graders will jump in on it. It took, oh, I think you know, it's gonna be a blast. I think yeah, it'll be now blast. that I'm in science, I want to be able to jump in and take advantage of these opportunities. <laughs> I've got to pass them on to someone else. Well, because you are a science sort of a guy now, there is another project that Shannon McClintock Miller yes, published this yes, weekend. Be, yeah, go ahead. Have you seen it already? She uh, she sent it to me while I was uh, in the middle of my presentation yesterday or on Saturday down in uh, in Maryland. So I took a, a real brief look at it. But go ahead and, and pull it up. Yeah. And she was using TAC for her project page, so that's what I'm using for mine, just as something different. We usually use Weebly, but I thought, well, she uses it. I'll, I'll give it a go as well. So thanks, Shannon, for a little inspiration there. Uh, but this particular one is Winter Around the World, and they're asking for students to do collaborative writing, some sort of creativity piece to go along with Winter Where You Are. She's created a pretty beautiful <laughs> web page, I have to yeah, say. Yeah. But it's all centered around this particular book, Winter, the Coldest Season of All. And she's even embedded your sign-up sheet right here on the page. So if you're logged into your Google account, you can come in and, and type on it. But I have not figured out how to make that part work. I'm working on that part mm. now. But uh, this is another one that's out there. So if you do a Winter Around the World project search, you should be able to find that one as well. Yeah, and that definitely fits for me. I could definitely work on that. Absolutely. So those are the things that I'm working on. Cool. And Mike, is there anything else before we talk about what's for lunch? Yeah. So uh, the we last last week we talked about getting a November video exchange going. Um, I have good news and bad news. The good news is I did start to look at that and and try and get that together. The bad news is that when Microsoft switched their website, I think that we lost um, the project pages from our former projects that were under the Tech Chat and Chill. Um, so I have to see if I can get those again because I was just going to copy and paste our um, our project from last time and just change the dates on it. Um, so that's not up and running yet, and it may be mid-November now instead of beginning of November. But um, you know, we'll we'll get that up and running eventually. Uh, the other thing I wanted to share is on my way back uh, driving home from where I presented down in Maryland this weekend, I stopped somewhere, and I'm not going to say where, and I shot another five clue video. 
Um, so I just uploaded it, and it will be on the site uh, shortly. And for those of you that teach American history and the Civil War, it might be a really cool one for you to take a look at. I have to say, though, thank you for those five clue challenges, because I was teaching a Skype session, and I was like, gosh, it's after hours. I can't connect with anyone. Well, I didn't have enough time to find someone outside of the United States. And so we used your challenges, and they loved it. They loved cool. it. Good, good. <laughs> it was great. It is cool. And, uh, you know, I was in Boston this weekend, and I could have easily put one together, and just I felt bad after he did that. I was like, oh, you could have done this. <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, it's funny because after, you know, it's something that I wanted to do forever and I just, you know, every time I'd get home from somewhere, like when I was in Kenya, I got back and I'm like, oh, I could have created a couple of videos there. But then after, um, when I went out west this this year um, with the family and I did a bunch of while I was out of different places, now it's become like habit. Like if I'm somewhere cool, I'm just like, oh, let me shoot a quick video and, you know, my daughter loves being the camera person when she's with me, but this one I was by myself, so it was a... Selfie. It's a family thing too. It's great. Yeah. She's she's on her way to being Spielberg. I can see it now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, friends. Well, I think it's time to talk about what's for lunch. So, Karen, what are you having? I stopped at Jack in the Box. What? Oh, there we go. Jumbo Jacks and some egg rolls. <laughs> Ooh, yum. Okay, Mike, what's for lunch? I had uh, leftover. It was. Um, it's not chicken pot pie, but it's like chicken pot pie only with biscuits on top that my wife makes. Um, so it was spectacular. Very nice. Micah? I had some spinach ravioli and grapes. And I'm being very bad today. I'm just snacking. Uh, we're going to have a big old dinner at my house tonight as uh, Sean McComb is coming to Kansas. He's the 2014 oh. National Teacher of the Year. Mm -hmm. So we're having a roll the red carpet out at the Smoked House. And I've been kind of running back and forth to make sure things are ready between events. And so, yeah, I just grab a little bite of something. <laughs> so um, I'm going to give the mmm to Karen this week because the egg rolls yeah. just amazing. And now <laughs> they're, if, they're you had, if you had one of those jack-in-the-box shakes to go with it, and then you get a double. Mm. I so. get a Coke, though, a Coke. See, yeah. and I, I've been drinking a lot of water lately, so today I'm like, oh, the Coke. There you go. <laughs> See, when I, that's one of the things, that when I lived out in Arizona, like there was jack-in-the-box out there, and I used to love those shakes, but now that I live back east, we don't have any jack-in-the-box. So. Oh. Yeah. You gotta come to El Paso. I'll take you to one. <laughs> there we go. I'll have to come out. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's it for today, and we'll see you next time on EdTech Chat 2. Bye. Bye. Bye.